And here we go again, everybody. Hey, everyone. Templar74 here with my 2016 end of year Q&A. And uh, I've got to I've got to be honest with you guys. I'm really surprised at the number of people that let me questions in this video. And I'm looking forward to answering them all. So anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now I'm going. I've actually got my uh, video up in front of me and I'm actually reading the comment section so the questions are going to come in the order I'm seeing them just heads up I'm not doing them in any particular order or you know who got them first who who waited till the last minute doesn't matter okay so I guess we'll start off with the top of the list Christopher Herndon uh, you ask me where is Nebby Templars well, Christopher, he is most certainly not in the bag. I'm sorry, you, you guys have to be on the Twitter community as well to get that reference. Where is Nebby? Not in the bag. And your second question is you basically are saying, please, just a tease of return to the different dimension so we know what we're in for. Well, that would be telling. But I will say this, probably the darkest story arc I've ever written. Uh, I've got the first three parts written, uh, the parts that'll be for the YouTube version, and then I've got to work on the part for fanfiction.net. But yeah, it, it's pretty dark. I'm not going to lie to you. You guys are, I got a feeling you guys are going to like this. It's going to answer some questions some of you guys have had since the very beginning of my fanfiction series. And I just hope you enjoy. And sorry, Chris, that's all you're going to get from me for right now. Okay, next up is Daniel Shelton. Did Serena's voice actor quit Pokemon? Never going to work for Pokemon anime again? A lot of people are saying she did, but I don't know. I don't think so. Actually, Daniel, you're right, because um, actually you're right on both circumstances. Uh, her Japanese voice actor has confirmed that she is on the show in some capacity, According to the translator in some capacity. I got a feeling it, it's worded a little differently, but, you know, it just depends on what translator you use. But no, Serena's Japanese voice actor has not quit the show, nor has her English voice actor, because she's already appeared on the cast listing for the first two episodes of Sun and Moon. She's not doing any major roles as of right now, hint, hint, but uh, she is doing some minor vo minor things in the background. But yes, to answer your question, Serena's voice actor did not quit Pokemon. Okay, next up, Justin Raymond. You ask me if and when Serena returns. I like how you put that in there, Justin. How do you think Serena and Ash's connection will be, especially after the kiss? Will it be brought up? Mm. And then you go on to say only two this time. Well... That's a tough one. Uh, I don't... Let's be honest. If Serena returns, yes, I think the kiss is going to be brought up at some point. Uh, I'm actually thinking since they're going the comedy route, I think they're going to make it a bit awkward at first. You know, and it's going to take a little bit of time for that to get comfortable again, but I think they're going to play off the awkwardness factor of it. Because, let's be honest, that, that would provide some pretty humorous moments. But I, I do think that if and when Serena returns, the kiss will most certainly be brought up. I'm sure Serena won't let that stay to themselves. But as far as the interactions between the two of them after that, I don't know. I think they'll play off the awkwardness factor there for a little while, but that's just me. Okay, next up, Minor Mole. And you ask me, what software slash program to you, do you use to make your videos? Well, I actually use two different programs. When I do Poke Talks, I use a program called WavePad, and it's a very... It's a very interesting and actually a very easy format of video maker that you can download. And WavePad works really well for the discussions because I can amplify the voices. I can mess around with the levels. I can do all those things. 
the fan fiction programs are done through um, or done with a combination of programs. I use Windows Movie Maker, uh, Photoshop, and I also use a few other image editing programs. So it, it's a combination of things. What episode first got you into a more shipping is your next question. And I believe I answered this um I can't remember if it was the interview I did for Alpha or if it was something that I did with Official or Skill. I can't remember at this point. But uh, Episode 7 was the episode that brought me back to the Pokemon series as a whole. And that's also the episode that sold me on Amore Shipping. Like, there's got to be something else there. And sure enough, there absolutely was. And the third question you ask is, is it possible for me to join you in any more shipping discussion videos or any videos really with you and maybe with whoever else wants also does them with you? Anything's possible, Minor Mole. Anything's possible. Uh, I don't really have any big discussions planned right away. Um, mostly it's just catching up on a few things here or there, so if if that does end up happening, it probably won't be till the first of the year, but anything's possible, Minor Mole. Thank you. Okay, Kevin, you asked me three questions. First off, which Poke Girl from Sun and Moon do you ship with Ash the or do you ship Ash with the most? Don't get me wrong, Serena, Serena's the first ship ever that I'd ship with Ash, and she's obviously the the canon one. Her and Ash's ship is the canon one. Uh, oh, you guys, you guys are probably going to kill me for answering this question. I'd have to say Mallow more than the other the other two. Uh, as of right now, it seems like it's the whole awkwardness factor. But I think out of the three of them, Lena, Lily, or Mallow, it'd be Mallow. Just saying. I mean, Lily, people that ship Ash and Lily together, Lily can't even touch Pokemon right now, guys. I don't think that would really work. But, you know, anything's possible. But, yeah, to answer your question, Kevin, sorry, I, I kind of lost my train of thought there for a second. But to answer your question, out of the three of them, most likely Mallow. Although, don't get me wrong, Serena's is the best and the canon one and the only real ship. Okay, next you ask me, did you recover well from the surgery? Yeah, my back surgery, I've got to be honest with you guys, it was a heck of an adjustment. Uh, I actually got the bill uh, about the surgery a couple of days ago and nearly had a heart attack because I found out now that I've got, I've got more money in my back now than I do, than I've ever had in my life, so... But money aside, yes, I have recovered well. I'm actually out of the wheelchair. I'm using these heavy ankle bracelet or heavy uh, leg braces to help me move around. I'm kind of moving from side to side. I'm still in the process of learning how to walk again. But yeah, so I'm recovering well. It's going to be a while before I'm back to 100% normal, but I'm getting there. And I thank you for your concern. And third, do you eat pie often? Only if it's pumpkin pie, Kevin. And yes, I would eat pumpkin pie every single... I'd eat it every single day, hour on the hour if I could. But yes, I do like pie. Okay, next up is Izzy Meloetta. You start off by saying, Hi Templar, hope you're doing well, and here are my questions. And I thank you for the well wishes, by the way, Izzy. First off, what's the status on Serena Tualola? Serena Tualola, I say the odds are still pretty good. I mean, uh, I actually talked about this in my rant video I did the other day. That's the one problem that pe that's still driving people nuts, is even though that the kiss has happened, Ash and Serena is confirmed canon by the writers and animators, Serena still has the best shot out of all of them to return. Especially considering uh, Sun and Moon Games are really just a big fan service, really. And 
Serena is one of the most popular things, and more shipping are two of the most popular things Pokemon's ever done. But that point aside, there's still a lot of evidence for Serena to Alola. I say the status is, it's looking pretty good still. We'll see here in a few months, but as of right now, status looks pretty good. Number two, which hairstyle would you want Serena to have in Alola? Short hair. Because Serena got awesome after she cut her hair short. I'm I'm sorry. I like Serena better with the short hair. Uh, so yeah, I I think if Serena does return and when she returns, she still needs to have the short hair. That's just me though. Okay. Your third question is back in XY and XY and Z, a lot of us believed in the a more time skip. Do you believe it's possible here in Sun and Moon? I believe anything is possible in Sun and Moon at this point. Like I said, the Sun and Moon games are like a big fan service. There's actually a very popular rumor going around that Ash is Sun's father in the game, or Sun and Luna, or Serene's daughter, or basically the theory is that Ash is the protagonist of the game's father. I don't know whether that's true or not. That's big fan speculation theory going around. It's not been confirmed nor denied. But I think that eventually, yes, we will need to see some kind of a time skip because Pokemon can't keep going on like this forever and ever and ever, in my opinion. And so, Izzy, I hope I answered your questions, and I hope you enjoyed all the videos. And I actually like your little pun here at the end. Have a, norm a more zing day. I like that pun, Izzy. Thank you for that. Okay, next up is Serena is in Alola. One, will you do a face reveal when Serena returns to Alola? If Serena returns to Alola and, like the big fan speculation is, she replaces Chicken Hat Girl and becomes one of the traveling companions in Alola, I will almost undoubtedly do a face reveal because I will have to do a live reaction to it. I'm just saying on that one. That that would be a pretty earth-shattering moment. And yes, I think a face reveal would be very likely for that. Okay. And then you ask me, what Pokemon do you think Serena will get when she returns in Alola? I actually think that she might wind up with, and this is just my own speculation, I'd like to see her wind up with the Alolan Vulpix. Um... If she doesn't evolve it, I would like to see her have a little Rockruff. And I'm trying to think of who would be a good third one for Serena to have. I can't really think of a good third one right off the top of my head, but definitely those two. Rockruff, if she doesn't evolve it, because she does need a ground type, and also she needs to get that Alolan Vulpix. But as far as a starter goes, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, if she fully evolved it, I would say Poplio because she does need a water type too. So those would be my top three picks for Serena's team from Alola if she does end up returning to Alola. <clears throat> okay, Nebby No Bag. And I believe... I brought this up just a second ago, Nibby. Uh, what is the chance of the protagonist from Sun and Moon being related to Ash? I mean, you can make the case that the protagonist story is very similar to the Pokemon anime. I mean, obviously, Ash is not the father in the game, but what if he was the father in the anime? There are just so many comparisons between them. The protagonist even has Ash Greninja. Uh, like I said, I think... That if Sun and Moon wanted to be the ultimate fan service, which it does look like that's going to be, I I could see that happening if the writers do ultimately do the time skip thing. Yes, I would say that that would be the most likely out of the out of all of them, but we'll just have to wait and see. I really do want the time skip to happen, and if Ash ages, I think that that may end up actually happening because. You know, you have to be 11 to compete in the Island Trials in Alola. So if they age Ash at that point, anything is possible, maybe. And I, I think that would probably be the best way that they would do that, or could do that, actually. And number two, your second question. Spoiler, Ash Pikachu was found in the data mine. And why would they put 
Ash Pikachu from in the game for no reason? Is it to celebrate the last of Ash Ketchum's story? Oh, my bad. I thought this was two separate questions. Uh, and thank you for spoiling me, Nebby No Bag. But uh, I did not hear that about an Ash Pikachu in in the data mine. Uh, I guess if that actually is a thing, I guess that helps tie more into the sun and moon being the uh, being the last uh, region before a time skip. But uh, I. I really don't know, Nebby, why they would put that in there. Uh, you got you stumped me a little bit. So I know I probably wasn't very helpful in answering your question, but I hope I gave you a good enough answer as well as good as I could anyway. Okay. Uh, Nebby no bags big spoiler alert aside. Uh, let's go ahead to Wardeen 99, and I hope I'm saying that right. And you ask me, what do you do in your spare time? such as play games or watch other shows besides Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon. Well, you know, if I if I wasn't laid up from this back surgery, I'd ask you what is spare time. But uh, that that whole point aside, Wardeen, um, I, I like to play games, uh, I really do like the vintage video game stuff. In fact, I've got a collection of vintage video game sets here. I've got uh, Atari, Nintendo 64. I, I'm a big nostalgia gamer when I have free time. Right now I have a lot of free time, but usually when I'm working, no free time. But uh, yeah, so I do like to play video games in my spare time. I also do like to go out and try to get some exercise. But other than that, basically play video games, exercise, and hang out with a few of my friends when I have the time. Okay. Sagnik Bahata. Uh, Sagnik. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that last name, Sagnik. I, I don't want to offend you. And I got a feeling I'd probably it up. So, yeah, I, I'm going to decline to... Uh, even try to attempt to pronounce your last name. Okay, your questions are, please tell me, is there any way Serena will rejoin Ash's journey in Alola? Because till now we haven't seen any Kalos Pokemon in Alola. Sagnet, uh, the whole um, not seeing any Kalos Pokemon in Alola is kind of irrelevant. But um, I do think there are actually a lot of ways that Serena could rejoin Ash and Alola. It could be as simple as um, she could return as far as... Uh, we know that she wants to journey to other regions, starting in Hoenn. It could be possible that ap and if Serena gets a special coming up, and it's not like her catch-up special, I think... What may happen is during that special, and this is how I'd see it anyway, during that quote-unquote Serena special to show her performing in like the last contest of the season or something like that in Hoenn, and somebody comes up and says something about Alola, and that catches Serena's attention and she heads off to Alola. Or it could be that she called, Ash told the gang before they separated that he was going back to Pallet and starting at zero, Serena could potentially call down to Ash's residence or Ash's mom, and Ash's mom say, says to her, well, actually, he's in Alola right now, and we could see that happen. There are quite a few ways I could see Serena returning into Alola. Then there could also be, um, and this is another one, something related to Ash Greninja and Zygarde when we get to that point. That could be a thing. There are just a lot of ways that Serena could possibly rejoin Ash's journey in Alola, and the whole Kalos Pokemon in Alola is kind of irrelevant. They do that a lot. Okay. Number two, is there a time skip between Kanto and Alola? Because every time we see Ash returns on the next day, Ash started his new journey, and we haven't seen any Kalos Pokemon in Alola. Uh, Sagnik, again, the Kalos Pokemon in Alola thing is really irrelevant, and... Uh, the whole uh, time skip between Kanto and Alola. Actually, there was one. It was a 
It was a short time skip, but there was a time skip. If you watch episode one where they explained how they wound up in Alola, you see that about a week has passed between there and then. So there has been somewhat of a time skip, not quite a big time skip, but a time skip. And uh, so I hope that answered your question. There, uh, there was a time skip, just not a very big one. And third, what happened with Ash's face, and is there a chance to swap it with the original face in Gen 8? Uh, well, what happened with Ash's face, and I was actually talking to Skilled Legend about this, is Sun and Moon, they actually started using a new type of animation software. And the animation software that they're using for Gen 7 is state-of-the-art. Although I know you really can't see it here, especially if you like the animations from Gen 5 and Gen 6. Uh, so Gen 7's new animation software is supposed to be cutting-edge. It's brand new. Uh, I don't... And I also think that that kind of throws away the chance that we could go back to that design for the next generation because this is new imaging software and basically the old stuff that they used for black and white and XY and XY and Z is scrapped at this point. It's considered obsolete. Could they have tweak could they tweak it between now and then? Absolutely. But I'm not getting my hopes too high on that. It's new animation software. And like like I've said before Ash's face is really the only thing I have a problem with. Everything else in the anime looks fine to me. It's just Ash's face, and I think that's just going to take some getting used to. So I hope that answered all your questions. And like I said, uh, Sagnik, I don't want to try to pronounce your last name because I'm afraid I'd offend you because you asked me to give you a mention in this. And I'm really afraid that I'm going to mess this up and offend you, so I'm not even going to try, and I hope you understand that. Okay. Maherman, you ask me, how do you think the writers will introduce Serena in the Sun and Moon anime, and what would the scene be like? Well, I kind of already gave my thoughts on how I could see Serena finding out about Alola and how she gets to Alola, but as far as introducing her into the Sun and Moon anime, I could see it one or two ways. Either I could see it like right before the school arc ends, maybe a couple of weeks ahead of time before that arc ends, and we all know there's an empty desk there, although it's most likely it may be how It still could be Serena when she returns as Serene and takes Serene's place. Um, basically, Serena finds out about the Pokemon school and is intrigued by it, and at this point she doesn't know that Ash is there, and uh, Kukui brings her in. To introduce her to the class and then she notices that hey that's ash and then they get reintroduced that way and then everybody's like wait a minute you two know each other and all that i could see that being a possibility if she returns like after the school arc and before they start traveling i could see serena just landing in alola and on her way to try to figure out you know, how to register for the dance competitions or whatever they have there that brought her there. And she sees Pikachu or Pikachu and uh, Rowlet playing around and she sees Pikachu and she's like, could it be? And she starts searching around and ends up running into Ash or Ash is looking for Pikachu and Rowlet and runs into her. I could see that. Um, I got a feeling the scene at first would be awkward. I would be amazed if this all happens and Serena didn't try to run up and hug Ash or something like that when she first sees him. I could see that. But I just don't know how how all that would go down. But that would be the way I could see it. Like Serena returning and she sees Ash, gets this big blush on her face and runs up and hugs Ash. And then we get like a couple of minutes of awkward silence before Lily or whoever's with Ash at the time jumps in. I could see that. Anyway, Maherman, I think that's my own personal opinion on how I could see Serena returning and how they would handle it. That's just me, though. Okay, next up. V Vemon Link 64. Excuse me, Young Link 64. Okay, 
your first question is, I know you are a huge Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh fan, which I am. Are you at all a Digimon fan? I think people have always looked down upon it as a ripoff when it was actually based on Tomagotchi toys, and I think if you think, or and I think if you like Pokemon, you'll be interested in Digimon. I'll be honest. When I was younger, I watched Digimon along with Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. Digimon just really did not catch with me. It still doesn't to this day. I, I'm sorry. I don't really understand Digimon. It's just, it, it's one of those awkward things where it seemed like a mix of Tamagotchi, maybe a little bit of Pokemon. I I just never really caught on to it, and it never really piqued my interest long enough to stay with it. So I am not a big Digimon fan. In fact, I don't think I've actually seen Digimon in probably, oh gosh, now what is it? Probably 17 years in other words, it's been a while. Okay, and second, do you think Gary comes to Alola, he'll have a ship with Lily? I don't know. I think it'd be funny. Uh, and actually, if Gary returns, um, Lily is pretty book smart on Pokemon, and Gary's pretty book smart on Pokemon. I could see that. I mean... It's a bit of a stretch, but I could really see that. That That's just me, though. So, I think if Gary comes back, that could be a possibility. And yes, why only have one ship, Ash and Serena, when you can have two? So, yeah, plus the shipping... I think Pokemon's really caught on to it that the shipping thing is popular. And so I think that they're going to try to stretch that as far as they can. But since they've already done the major service of already committing Ash and Serena, they're going to have to find another ship to mess around with. And I think that that'd be a pretty good one that they, they would try. So, Veeman Link, that's... Or Young Link, whichever one you're going by now. Th those are my thoughts. Yes, I think that... I, I think that if Gary came to Alola, he could have a ship with Lily. I don't think it'd be as popular as Ash and Serena, but, you know, anything's possible. And I absolutely agree with you. Why only, why only have one ship when we could root for two, or have two ships to root for? Okay, next up, Maria Carlon. I hope I'm saying that right. Okay, so your first question is, what are your thoughts about the Sun and Moon anime so far? I'll be honest with you, Marie, or Maria, I, um, episodes one and two were really great for me. I really liked one and two, and I'm like, okay, if they do all the episodes this way, this could actually be a great series. Three and four were okay, five is just, meh. So it's having a... I'll be honest with you guys, I'm enjoying Sun and Moon a lot more than I thought I would, and that's speaking volumes. But um, I just don't think I've got enough of Sun and Moon to base a formal opinion on it. Like I said, 1 and 2 were really good, 3 and 4 were okay, and then 5 is where it really started going down. And I fear that we're going to get into a slow progression because now they've got so many... I think this is the thing that's ruining Sun and Moon, is they have too many main characters at this point to mess around with. And now they're having to spend all this time introducing these characters when they're not even going to be the full traveling party. It, it doesn't make sense to me. And that's pretty much my thoughts on Sun and Moon so far. Not enough to build a full conclusion, but, the, but it's better than what I thought it would be. Okay, and your second question. If Serena does come back, likely as a companion, how, do you, how would you think she would enter the anime like... I think that is the most popular question I've been asked so far, because I think I've already answered this like three times. But I think it's going to happen one or two ways. It's either going to happen at the end of the school arc, like close to the very end, where Serena comes into Alola, she's found out about Alola from Hoenn, and she shows up there. And the Pokemon school catches her curiosity as well, and um, Kukui brings her in, and she sees the ashes there, and they have a reunion that way. Or it could be, like I said, 
Ashes just start traveling. Rowlet and Pikachu run off, and Serena's coming down the way, and she sees that that's Pikachu. Pikachu recognizes her, and she's like, "Could this be?" And then Ash shows up. I could see I could see one of those two options showing up, but that's just kind of me at this point. Okay, so I hope that answered your question, Maria. All right, next up, John Bogan. I hope I'm saying that right, John. Okay, if you ran a Pokemon Jam of your own, what Pokemon type would you specialize in? That's your first question. Uh, if I were running a gym, I would probably say I'd specialize probably in dragon type. And I think that dragon type would be my gym because it's one of my favorite typings. Yes, they've got their weaknesses, but they also have some strengths. And dragon Pokemon, some of the dragon Pokemon have some of the best designs in my opinion. So I would say that if I ran a Pokemon gym of my own, it'd be dragon based. And yes, I do believe, like, I believe it is very possible and actually very likely that Serena will come back as the Chicken Hat Girl because they are not seen anywhere in the anime, as you've stated. They've actually confirmed that Chicken Hat Girl is not in the anime, so it's not Serene or Luna that's in there. And the fact that they look so much alike is just, I don't believe in coincidences, and there's too many coincidences there to tell me that that's not even a possibility. Whew. And next up is Scott Carter. Do you think that, and you ask me, do you think that if Serena comes back, the rebooted Pokemon series main character will be her and Ash's child after a time skip? I think that if they were ever going to reboot the Pokemon series, that would be the best way to do it. And I have a feeling that they wrote Serena in and Amor shipping in specifically for that purpose and Ash having an interest in her is when they actually do get to the point where they want to reset the anime or reset the anime, essentially. They don't have to necessarily reset the games, but reset the anime. That would be the way to do it. And I actually do think that's why they've put in Amor shipping is the canon ship, not just for Serena's character development, but also to lay the framework for the new protagonist, because if you think about it, Serena is the first traveling companion that's known Ash the longest, and Ash actually shows an interest in. But yes, I do think that if they were going to reboot the series in any way, shape, or form, that would be the way they do it. Okay. Next up is Anime's Max Worlds. And you ask me, would you like if Serena won an anime series like the Mega Evolution specials with one per month or something like that? In this series, Serena would travel around the world and we will see her develop. Not only that, but this series can have a connection with the Sun and Moon anime. Like Lusamine appears, appears here, like Lissandre did in the Mega Evolution. So that at the end of the series, Serena can go to Alola. What do you think about all that? And if that happened, would how would you would like to the Serena anime be? I'll be honest with you, that is actually not a bad idea. I think the only problem with that is right now, with how much the ratings have been sinking for Sun and Moon, especially after episode 5, I would fear that Serena's own side anime would end up being more popular than the actual than the actual anime. So while I would love to see that happen, and I think that's an awesome concept, I fear that that would actually grow more popular than the actual main Pokemon anime. So would that happen? I think if they wrote Serena in, they could do it that way. And in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they did it that way to bring Serena back in, similar to what they did with Mega Evolution specials. But I fear that that, that would actually grow more popular into the Sun and Moon anime, and then that would cause all kinds of problems. And then you ask me, what do you think would be the perfect way to celebrate 20-year anniversary of the Pokemon anime next year. Well, I think the perfect way would be to let Ash and Serena reunite with each other. That may just be me, but I think that would be the perfect way because Ash and Serena have known each other the longest and they have the longest story in the entire anime. Uh, there are some other ways they could do it. I could totally see, like, maybe not just Serena return, but maybe, like, some kind of special tournament 
battle tournament in Alola, like a Royale tournament. And Ash, they do something similar to what they did like in Diamond and Pearl, where during the Sinnoh League, where Ash brings back everybody to participate in the Battle Royale. He could not only reunite with Serena there, but we could see like all the different Pokemon that Ash has had throughout his travels. And we could see some of the comparisons to their Alolan rivals. That's just me. I think that'd be a pretty cool way to celebrate 20 years, to be honest with you. But again, that's probably just me. But that would just be my own little theory on what would be the best way to celebrate the 20th anniversary. All right, next up, Darmeek Tembadia. I hope I'm saying that right, and if I'm not, I, I apologize. But um, you ask me, there is an empty seat in the school. It might be filled by someone. Who could that be, How or Serena? I think it's a 50-50 split. Uh, I think the most likely answer would be Hal, but I also think it could be Serena. It it depends because Hal is seen as more of a rival, and that's the only reason why I think it could be Serena, maybe a bit more than Hal, but I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but I think most likely it, it, it would be Hal. But again, like, like I said, I see Hal as more of a rival, so I got a feeling that it's going to be kind of similar to Shota, to where you run into him as you're actually traveling the islands and run into him as a rival rather than a schoolmate. And I think that the schoolmate angle may be better played by Serena if she returns and when she returns. Uh, and then you ask me, what are the chances she will travel with Ash and not in a stupid cameo? I say the chances are pretty good. That's just me, just because of her resemblance to serene and the fact that serene is confirmed to not be anime or she is game exclusive so i think that serena would most likely come in and replace her and if that's actually the case i do think that she would return as a traveling partner and i, I think the odds are pretty good for that especially considering the whole fan service angle as well and third, are you enjoying Sun and Moon anime as I find it okay, not as good as XY? I fully agree with you, Dermeek. I, I completely agree with you. I'm not in, I'm enjoying Sun and Moon anime more than I thought I would. I find it okay, not nearly as good as XY. I don't think anything's going to be XY and XY and Z as far as an anime is concerned. But I think the Sun and Moon anime is okay. Anyway, I hope that answered your question, Dermeek. Okay, next up, Ligiman, or Lingyan, 203, excuse me, Lingyan. Where do you get the information from during your Poké Talks regarding Serena to Alola as well as Serena's popularity? Can you send us the sources where you get the information during your future Poké Talks, like post them in the description or something? Uh, for the Serena to Alola stuff, I'm going to try to do that. Most of the stuff is available on Poke Jungle, Bulbapedia, Serbi. That's where I get a lot of my information from. And Anime News Network is actually another big one that I get information from. So those are the major sources I use. Poke Jungle's the big one, Bulbapedia, Serbi. And like I said, Anime News Network, those are the indefinable sources, along with Koro Koro and Twitter. But it's just, the Serena to Alola stuff is all there. You just have to know when to look for it. I'll try to post links. I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be doing any more Serena to Alola discussions for a while. I'm sorry to disappoint you guys. But there's always that chance. I mean, if something pops up that's interesting or, you know, bleeps across the radar, I'll absolutely do it. But... I think right now we need to sit and wait because we still have all this evidence that goes around. But yes, I will try to put sources in the descriptions from now on. Okay, next up. Satoshi Kikoga. When Serena returns, how will you react and what will happen if Ash and Serena meet up? Uh, I think... I think I'd have one or two reactions. Either first, I'd be like, I would probably cry at first, but then I'd be like jumping up and down and 
like a little fanboy or fangirl or something like that. I'd be fangirling right there at that moment, to be honest with you guys. But, well, maybe not jumping up and down because my back may not allow that. But I'd probably be, I'd probably be going total fangirl on that. And what would happen if Ash and Serena meet up? Like I said, I think Serena would probably hug Ash at first and they would, you know, they'd kind of reflect for a few minutes. But then I think it'd turn awkward for a couple of minutes, especially if there's somebody there. But that's, that's just me. Okay, next up. Adam Dilia, I hope I'm saying that right. If, and if I'm not Adam, I apologize. Your first question is, what is your favorite animated series? Over... If you're talking about overall, I'd probably have to go with Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5. Uh, if you're talking about Pokemon and just the Pokemon brand as a whole, XY and XY and Z, without discussion. Those are those are my two favorites. And then you asked me, your second question was from Adam was, what is your favorite Pokemon episode that is not XYZ47? Oh man, you take out the best one! That's not cool, man. That's that's not cool. Uh, I would have to say that favorite Pokemon episode as a whole would probably it would probably be X Y Z forty five. I have multiple reasons for that, not just the more shipping episode because it was pretty much the date that everybody wanted, but it just it highlighted Ash's maturity. It it helped reestablish and without question cement to everybody's mind pretty much that the Ash and Serena relationship is real. And that Ash genuinely cares about Serena and her happiness. And it showed his maturity as he was able to help Serena, you know, finally figure out what she's going to do next after he leaves. And I think that that is probably why XYZ45 would be my favorite. And your third one is not really a question. It's just meow. So I'm, I'm not, I'm, that's not really a question. So I'm going to move on. Okay. Jody Rudolph, you asked me, what programs do you use to create your videos? Like I said, I use Movie Maker, WavePad, Photoshop, and I also use a software called Vinwind or Vindwind, V-I-N-W-I-D. Uh, it's an older software, but you know, uh, why change what isn't broken? So Movie Maker, Winvid, um, WavePad. And Photoshop and photo editor. That's pretty much what I use, and I use them all in conjunction to create all of my videos. And then you ask me in my story for fan fiction, will Ash and Serena have another child? Maybe. Uh, and then you go on and give me a story idea, and I appreciate the story idea, and I will take some serious look into that. Uh, Return to Different Dimension is obviously going to come first. But uh, to quote our good friends on the Pokemon anime about Serena to Alola, expect surprises. I'll just say that. And I thank you for your praise. And I hope that I answered your question, Jody. Okay. Next up, Ryan Joseph. All right. My first question is, when Serena returns, how were at, will Ash and re, or how will her and Ash's reunion be like? And I've already answered that a few times, Ryan. Uh, I think it could happen one or two ways. And then how would his traveling companions react to that reunion? I think they would act surprised at first, like, you know her or, you know, what what's going on here. And I think it would require a bit of explaining. I think it would be really awkward there for a little bit. But uh, I really do think that her and Ash's reunion will be one of happiness at first, then a bit of awkwardness. I got a feeling that awkwardness is going to spread. Okay, next up, Dirty. Oh boy, here, Dirty. Your thing, it, or your comment is, seize the thumbnail. Well, time for an appropriate question. 
Okay, thank you, Dirty, for following the following the, the thumbnail. I appreciate that. And you ask me, do you consider me as your friend? Yes, Dirty. I, I consider just about everybody that follows me on Twitter and on YouTube, whether you criticize me or whether you like my content, I consider you guys all friends. We're all one big community, and it's like a big family. So yes, Dirty, I do see you as a friend. Okay, next up, Ollie the Beast. Why are you awesome? I don't know, Ollie. <laughs> I, I really don't know. I guess maybe I was just born that way. Uh, no, I, I really don't have a good answer to that question. Some of my friends have asked me that for a while, and I'm like, well, I'm not that awesome. But uh, I'm flattered, and I'm sorry I don't really have a great answer to that question, but I, I just really don't know, man. Okay, next up. Hohen Shard, number one, or your first question, and it looks like your only question. Do you think Ash might have a shot at finally winning the Pokemon League? Not in Sun and Moon, because there really isn't a Pokemon League. Uh, if post game, the main protagonist is responsible for creating the League of Alola, but there isn't one in Alola, so Gen 7, probably not a chance at all of that happening. Gen 8, who knows? So, yeah, Gen 7, not very likely at all. Okay, next up, Flame Plays Games. What's your favorite thing to do in your free time? And I think probably my favorite thing to do in my free time is either hang out with my friends uh, when I'm not working and when I'm actually well enough, go out and exercise, but that's not really an option, or I sit around and I play my vintage video game collection, and that's something else I enjoy doing in my free time. Although, I really don't know what free time is. Okay, next up. Frost Bros. And you asked me, do you think Serena is coming earlier than expected? If so, why? And... be honest with you, the way the ratings are going, I really hope hope that she comes back earlier than expected if she comes back at all because main speculation is around the 20th anniversary i'm not sure sun and moon will last to the 20th anniversary of the anime that's just me though uh and that's mostly why it's ratings and i think if she does return it it's better sooner rather than later and if the special at the end of the year is a Serena one, now I must emphasize everybody that has not been confirmed that it's a Serena one it's most likely going to be like a a preview special of things to come like they did in X, Y, and X, Y, and Z. But if it is a Serena one, do you think it will end with Serena setting sights in Alola? If she returns in Alola, absolutely. I think that that would be the best thing to do and the best way to do it. But if she doesn't return to Alola and it's a uh, focus around her, that's pretty much where I'm like, well, I don't know anymore, guys. But yes, I think that if Serena does return to Alola at all, that that would be how, or that would be the uh, vi the special that that happens in, is her setting her sights on Alola. Okay, next up, Cool MIA. You asked me, do you play any video games? Yes, I do. I have an extensive collection back here. Right now, uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon have gotten all of my attention, but I do have other consoles here, and I do play a lot of other video games. And then you asked me, what is your favorite ship so far in Alola? Like I said, I don't support any of them as like a serious thing. But if they're going to go ahead and ship Ash with somebody from Alola, I'd prefer it be Mallow over Lily or uh, Lena. So most likely just Mallow over, Mallow over the others. And third, what is your favorite food? Pizza. You can never go wrong with pizza. In fact, I think most of my... Uh, most of my time at community college and in EMT school, uh, I think I pretty much survived on Little Caesars pizza. You know how they make the assumption of, oh, well, college students always survive on ramen noodles. Me, it was Little Caesars pizza. And I hope those answered your, or I hope that answered your question, cool Mia. Okay, next up is Jake. First one is, what is your favorite Pokemon YouTuber? Uh, I actually have a tie right now between Pokemon YouTubers. The two, my two favorites 
Well, actually, no, I got to take that back. It's a tie between three favorites. Uh, Tyrone the God 3, Dane, or Dane95 on Twitter, and the Chornik. Those three are pretty much tied for position of favorite PokeTuber. And because all three of them do awesome videos, they all have awesome content, and they all try to stay positive and not be biased, and they, they make great con content. And also, Dane is an awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! tuber, by the way. If you guys want to go check out anything on Arc 5, I suggest going to Dane's channel and checking him out. Okay, and number two, what is your favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! card so far? In Arc 5, favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! card would probably have to be Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon. Because it's iconic. The way that Pendulum Dragon was formed was just... It was by Zark, we know now. But Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon is my favorite. It's got the best effect out of, out of some of them that I've seen. And so, yeah, I'd say out of the latest generation of Yu-Gi-Oh!, Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon is my favorite. Okay, next up. Tajana... Milozic, I hope I'm saying that right, and if I'm not, I, I apologize. You ask me, how did I start watching anime? Mm, that's a bit of a wash. Uh, Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, I actually, I actually watched them in the dub, and actually, to be perfectly honest with you guys, I didn't know they originated in Japan at the time when I first started watching them. I found that out a few months later, and once I found out that they're that they originated in Japan and there were original versions with subs. I went and started watching them and I think that's how it started was I just watched them here. I didn't know they originated over there and watched Japanese versions and in most of the cases the Japanese versions ended up being better than the dub versions. I think the only exception to that rule would probably be uh, the original version of Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters but I think that that's the one that the dub actually did better than the Better than the sub version, but that's just me. Next up, Kyle Shalak. Okay, first up, what programs do you use for your Pokemon? Or what Pokemon? What programs did you use for your Pokemon show or my fan fiction? Like I said, I use a combination of them. I use Windows Movie Maker, WavePad, WinVid, and I also use um, Photoshop and photo editing software as well. So those are the programs that I use to create my videos. Next up, do you think Serena will come back on the show? I do believe so. Uh, be honest with you, it wouldn't really make sense if she didn't. And I'd be very surprised if she didn't at this point. And do you think that they will kiss if they saw each other again? No, not right away. I think most likely you'd get a hug out of them first. And then what happens after that... It, I just don't know. But I think most likely we'd see a hug out of both of them if they return, or if Serena returns and they reunite again. Next up, and Kyle, I hope those answered your questions, by the way. Hessmans, and I hope I'm saying that right. What do you think about Loxton's theory after playing Pokemon Sun and Moon? Does it still hold up? Yes and no. Uh... Loxton actually made a debunked video where he pretty much disproved himself. But most of the things he said in his videos have been really good and really solid. It's just, it's, it's weird. Like, he's not wrong, but at the same time, he's not 100% right. I think it still could be a possibility, just not in the way that Loxton laid out in his elaborate, awesome style that he it has. But... I think Loxton's theory still holds a lot of water, even though it's not originally how he intended it to turn out. Okay. Grace Everdeen. Any new Pokemon Sun and Moon ships that you like or support? I believe I already answered this. I do not support any of them, but I do kind of like the Ash and Mallow. But I don't support any of them like in an official, serious kind of way like Ash and Serena. Okay, next up, Zix yeah. a Hanort Exterminator, and I hope I'm saying that right. If not, I apologize. Uh, your first question is, if Serena does return, which is more than likely, what Pokemon 
would she have? Well, I think it goes without saying she'd have Sylveon, Panchem, and Brakeson. Uh, as far as Hoenn Pokemon that she could have... I'm lost. I, I, I really don't know. Uh, I think it'd be very possible. In fact, I'd be very surprised if she returned with at least one Hoenn Pokemon with her. But as far as what it is, I really, really couldn't say. that. I think that would be a big surprise onto what she would have. Because I can't really think of one right off the top of my head that would fit her. Or a couple of them that would fit her. Okay. When do you think Ash will start traveling again? I believe that it'll probably be sometime in the spring because they can't do the school arc thing forever because it was only like 10 minutes of the whole game. And the fact that they're spending this long on it is actually surprising in itself. But I really do think that the school arc thing was more of a gimmick like we need to extend this out because we released so late in the year. I, I really do think that's the route they're going down. I do think it'll probably be around the 20th anniversary when Ash starts traveling again for the anime. I think Ash will start traveling around again late March, early April. And do you think totem Pokemon will exist in the anime? I don't know. I, I would like to see them exist. I, I don't think they will, though, sadly. But I would like to see them in the anime, yes. Okay, next up, Creative Leopard. First question, can you see the writers ending Sun and Moon with Ash and Serena together and with a new protagonist? I could most certainly see that, especially now that we're going past 20 years here with the same formula. I think it's possible. Rika's not getting any younger, show's going on 20 years, and to be honest, it's kind of stagnated in the ratings for Sun and Moon have kind of dropped off, dropped off a cliff at this point. And... What are my opinions about this video? I've seen that video. And I declined to answer that one just because of who made it. He is somebody that is really not welcome on this channel because he's just a major troll. And he's created more problems in the community than, than most people realize. And also, I do like your little note there that it took 47 episodes for Serena to find her goal and then uh, she kissed Ash on episode 47 of X, Y, and Z. I, I do like that. I do like that uh, that correlation pointed out. And I didn't realize that until you actually commented that. But that actually is pretty good. And I think that's actually really cool that they've done that in a nice attention to detail. Next up, Grace Everdeen, the first one that you put on here. Uh, what was your reaction to the kiss? Uh... Well, I'll be honest with you guys. I did not get on Twitter. I did not get on YouTube because I was—I forget what I was doing at the time. And but anyway, I was doing something, so I decided not to spoil myself and I'd wait till I got home. And so when I finally did pull out my phone and I opened YouTube when I got home, the first video or the first video in the on the list was Ash and Serena finally kiss. I'm like. What what the hell? So I open my phone immediately and I'm seeing like YouTube is flooded with this. I'm like, okay, I, I gotta see the episode now. I I cried. I'll be honest with you guys, I cried a little bit. I thought I was gonna end up joining officials club where I punched a hole in the wall, but luckily that didn't happen. But you know, I was just in complete disbelief and for a second there I almost dropped my phone because I still couldn't believe it. And I still couldn't, can't believe it to this day, but I really do think that that was the best way for Serena to depart on a good note, and it finally made a more shipping the cannon ship, and they put so much stuff into that episode as well that pretty much now, without a doubt, and no longer in question, a more shipping is canon. And the writers and animators have confirmed that the a more shipping is now canon, regardless of what some people want to say or not. Next up, Anime Star Theorist 5. You asked me, other than Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon, have you ever seen any other anime shows? I have, and I know somebody actually got into an argument with me on this over uh, Twitter and YouTube. I have seen the Avatar series from on Nickelodeon here in the States, and actually, people are going to say, well, that's not an anime. 
Actually, according to the de dictionary's definition of anime, it does fit. So that it is considered an anime, and the creators of the show have considered it, quote, a anime. So I consider that an anime. Uh, I have seen a little bit of Dragon Ball. Has, uh, it doesn't catch my attention very much. I have seen... I have seen a bit of Digimon, like I said earlier, that didn't really catch my attention. So I have seen other shows, but those two are the big primary ones. What are my views on the Sun and Moon anime? As I stated before, I'm enjoying it a lot more than I thought I would. I'll be honest with you guys, I thought that it was going to completely suck, and it hasn't completely sucked, which is mind-boggling. So I'm enjoying it more than I thought, but right now it's just kind of okay. I'm not really... 100% happy with it, but it's okay. And it's not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. And what is my Sun and Moon team in the games? And I actually posted this on Twitter the other day. My current Sun and Moon team, or Sun team, because I'm playing Sun right at the moment, my current roster stands with Ash Greninja, Alolan Sandshrew, Mudsdale, Lycan Rock, it's midday form, the, evol the evolution of Rockruff. I did get that little dog, by the way. 50% Zygarde, and Ducidae, the final evolved form of Rowlet. So that is my current roster as of right now, and I'm really happy with this roster. Wide variety. And that is my current team in Sun right now. And I know I've got two, I've got a legendary and an OP Greninja, so not really too fair. And then the last one is from Grace Everdeen again. Have you seen any other good anime recently besides Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh? Nothing good. I have seen some animes, most of them have been flops. So to answer your question, no, Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh right now are the big good ones that I'm watching. All right, everybody. That is the list for of questions for this episode of, or this video of the 2016 end of year Q&A. I hope I answered all your questions to the best of my abilities, and I hope that I didn't kind of butcher your names in the process of trying to pronounce them, and if I did, I apologize, I did not mean to. Anyway, everybody, I hope I answered all your questions. In the comments down below, let me know if I did answer your questions or if I didn't give you a specific enough answer, and I'll try to reply. All right, everybody, as always, Templar74 signing off. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll talk to you all next time. Goodbye, everybody.